Yeah! What are they good for? Absolutely cycling! Say it again! We've got a special treat for you today. It's a game featuring Matt's dad. Mm. That's true, my dad of course was a world famous bicyclist. He, he did all of them. And so we dedicate this review to old Daddy Lees. Keep it peace, Daddy Lees. Flam Rouge is a game about a time when the time comes when you just gotta know who is the best at bikes. And that is when the men gather on a road or anywhere where they can put the pedals up and down until they know which of them is the best at those damn bikes. So it's a race game. Yeah, but more importantly, it's just a fantastic game. Like a bicycle, this game might look quite mundane, but it's easy to learn, tons of fun, and you'll never quite understand how it works. Whether you're playing Flamme Rouge with two, three, or four players, each of you has a two-man cycling team. Half of that team is the Rueleur, who is a man who just cycles medium fast almost all of the time, and the other part of that team is the Sprinter, someone who mostly goes quite slowly, but occasionally will suddenly go really, really fast for reasons that are almost definitely wholly legal. All right, boys, this is it. I want to see a clean race. In a game about fast men, the fastest thing in Flam Rouge is probably the rules explanation. At the start of each turn, you're going to pick one of the decks belonging to one of your two bike lists. You deal yourself four cards, you look at them, and then you pick one of those movement values for your bike list, and the other cards go on the bottom of the deck. Only then can you look at the deck belonging to the other bike list and pick a movement card for them and then put them on the bottom of your deck. Then everybody, once this is all done, reveals the cards they picked, and you move that many spaces, starting from the front, going backwards. Your bicycle boys, or by boys, will hug the innermost lane, then fill the outermost lane, then move through each other, but they can never stop on top of one another, so if the pack is dense, you might waste some of your movement. Once that's done, you take the cards you play and you throw them away, as you gradually run out of energy in your thighs and whittle away at your deck. And now Matt's going to explain the other rules that make this game... a game. Slipstreams allow packs of cyclists to clump up together when there is exactly one space between them. So what you do is you just take this bunch of bike men and you shuffle them up together. Shuffle, 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 all until they're together in one tight pack. However, if you have somebody that's a bit further ahead, then they're on their own. This matters for one very simple reason. When you're at the front of the pack, you've got to do all of the work whilst everyone else behind you just breezes by enjoying wind and physics. As with life, this game is mostly about leeching off of other people's successes. So when you're at the front of a pack, be it here or here, or worse, when you're just off on your own, you have to take an exhaustion card, which is a card with a really low number on it, and add it into your already ever-diminishing deck. One exhaustion card? That's fine. You'll thin your options out a tiny bit once in a while, but if you keep leading the pack, then your hands will get like this, narrowing your options, taking away your control and speed. So it's better not to be at the front of the pack, then. You want to just sit behind in second place, let somebody else do all of the hard work for years and years while you bide your time until they're tired and exhausted and slip ahead and take control. And then there's hills. Hills are awful and everything is bad on hills because slipstreaming doesn't work. And if you play a movement card that's higher than a five, it's lowered to a five. That's one more thing to think about when you're managing your deck for the whole race. But then you've got downward slopes. Any card you play, if you start your turn on a downward slope, so you're trying to hit that little window, becomes a five. It's a great time to get rid of exhaustion cards. Just close your eyes, kick your legs out, feel the wind, caress your thighs. Gwen, this is a family show. Oh yeah, it is. And then to win the game though, you just need one person to cross over the finish line. So for a lot of this race, you've got all this camaraderie, trying to keep your cycle men smushed together so they both don't get too tired. Keep them in a pack until eventually at some point you go, bang, it's time to soar ahead. Bum, 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 in the hope that you're just going to blast ahead, have that last moment of speed, cross the winning line and, and win. 
But I mean, I don't think I'm going to catch up with Quinns, to be honest. He's so far ahead. How is... Quinns, how are you so good at this game? So that's Flamme Rouge. It's very straightforward, but in play, it's one of those slow delights that we talk about so much where you can set it up and teach it and start playing so quickly, propelling your bicyclers along the road, but then you get to watch this realization on your friends' faces like treacle dripping across their consciousness of all the little fine details as to how you play well. So here are some of the things that your friends are gonna be realizing. First off, if you count, there are enough numbers in your deck to propel you over the finish line and then loads further, which means the fastest way to cross the finish line is just to play the highest numbers, right? But if you do that, you'll be pedaling by yourself the whole way and then you're gonna get exhausted and you won't be able to find those high numbers. So you must be part of a pack. But a pack is a very weird thing to be part of because you never wanna lead the pack. So you want to go slow, but if you go too slow, then you're going to fall out of the arse of the pack, like a sad turd that it's left behind that then has to cycle incredibly quickly just to catch up again. But the other weird thing about packs is that if everyone's going slow and nobody wants to be in the lead, then maybe everyone's playing their slow cards, which isn't the most efficient way to play the game. So then you want to break out of the pack and go faster than everyone else. You can cross the finish line first. But if you do that, what you don't want is for then the pack to just be one space behind you and then slipstream and get free movement behind you. So if you're going to break off, you need to do so from the position at the front of the pack, which is that place you didn't want to be anyway. So that's cool and interesting, but still, Flamme Rouge might not be much of a game if you only had one cycleman. But you don't. You have two, and you can coordinate them. In a dream game, one is always going to end up one space behind the other and getting a free slipstream. But this is fun. It's gambling, because, of course, you have to look at cards and assign one for a cyclist before you can even look at the other. So you get potential doomsday scenarios, like maybe I have this guy go really slow so the other one can catch up and slipstream, but then he only gets slow cards so he doesn't make it, and then they both get exhaustion and that's a nightmare. You're also thinking about the fact that in a dream situation, one of them is going to be collecting exhaustion for the whole race, keeping the other one fresh and able to burst over the finish line. That is definitely illegal, don't do that if you're in a race. In the two-player game, it's like a real psych-out. Maybe I should burn ahead while I can now and get in the lead, or maybe I should just waste away through my slow cards, because they'll play their slow cards as well, thinking I'm going ahead, but then actually we'll both be behind, and I'll slipstream behind, and basically you can see already, it's like a mad game of spooky poker. But obviously, though, this game shines the brightest when you have a four-player game, a full complement of eight cyclists. You have different packs of cyclists clumping up together around the board. You have lanes getting blocked by cyclists being up together, which means hills when everyone slows down are like terrible traffic jams, and it's all of the sweat and tears and sweat of real bicycles. So all that makes for a lovely, fresh, crisp little puzzle, like you're cycling through an alpine mountain pass with the wind in your eyes. But there are a couple of small problems with Flamme Rouge. The first little nitpick is that it's difficult to tell your miniatures apart. They do have a big letter in the back of their jersey, but you can't really see it. The other problem is that the puzzle here is just a little bit secretive, okay? So compared to other games that we recommend as entries to this hobby, great games like Mysterium, Cockroach Poker, or Diamant, um, it's possible to kind of lose Flamme Rouge and not necessarily realize why. You see, to understand why exhaustion cards are bad, you need to understand the probability of your deck. To understand why just one space of slipstreaming is great, you have to understand that the difference between first and second place is only going to be two or three spaces, and that stuff really adds up. But I'm not going to call this a huge problem because Flamme Rouge has a little feather in its cap when it comes to beating out other great entry games we recommend, and that's nostalgia. This game feels cosy. It's a race. You're moving your little plastic figure towards a finish line as if you're playing snakes and ladders. People are going to feel immediately at home, more so than any other game Shut Up and Sit Down has recommended, and that, I think, goes a long way. It's simple. It's immediate. It's great. I agree. I heard this game was good, but even so, I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I ended up doing. It's never mind the, uh, the ups and downs of the hills you're on. It's the tension and the excitement of the card play that's the real roller coaster. Roller coaster, because the, one of the men is called a ruler. Yeah. 
Oh, Quinns, you're so good at shut up and sit down. How are you so good at this? Oh, I don't know. Oh, mm. oh no. Somebody swapped your sugar for flour. To let somebody else do all of the hard work for years and years and take control. Oh, you can't eat it. I thought it would taste of cakes, but it just, it just tastes of dust. Oh my god, like... <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> I 